So as long time viewers on this channel will know that I've covered oxygen several times in various different videos. And one of my biggest gripes with oxygen is that I don't really like the interface. I think it's a little bit dated, it's not that intuitive, and sometimes you have to dig around to get at the things that you actually need to get a job done. Well, today we're gonna to take a look at a potentially free plugin, which I do think you should support, that changes a lot of that. It embraces the one-click access options, updates the interface, and also gives us a range of really useful tools. So let's take a look at Recoder. This is a plugin for Oxygen, and we're gonna cover that in this video. So this is the Recoder workspace. This is the plugin. Let's take a quick look over what it offers, and then we're gonna install it and see how it changes the whole Oxygen interface and experience. We've got a lot of options. You can see we've got a different look to the workflow. It helps us to use a one-click interface. We've got resizable left and right-hand panels. We can one-click class switch, so it's not just a visual update. It brings with it a whole slew of really useful features that just makes everything a lot easier when working with Oxygen. We've got WS mode, shortcuts, nine themes, other small UX tweaks. One of the things that I do like about this is the keyboard shortcut to access various different things. It's got some code enhancements if you're writing CSS, those kinds of things. It makes that considerably quicker. Lots of really useful things. You've also got designer must-have tools. So you've got a grid. So if you like to work to that normal grid layout to kind of just fine tune and refine your layouts, this is great. It overlays it directly on your design. You've got X mode, viewport handles, canvas control, responsive helpers. You can see we've got a live server. This just allows you to make changes and those changes will be reflected so you don't have to update everything every single time. You've got code sense, hints. You've got one line that changes game, whatever the heck that means. You can add multiple classes at once, add multiple classes to multiple elements. Again, all things that speed up the whole process of working with the Oxygen Editor. So that's basically what you have. Let's go ahead now, jump into Oxygen itself, open up a page and enable the plugin to see the differences. So this is your traditional Oxygen layout. So let's just hop over back out of this, back into our dashboard. And let's go ahead and activate the Recoder Workspace plugin. So there we go, Recoder Workspace. Let's just activate this. And there we go. You can see it already looks considerably different, but does it really bring anything new to the table? Let's take a quick look at some of these things. I'm not going to cover everything. I would highly recommend if you're an Oxygen user to download this, install it on a development test server, whatever you want to kind of do. It's not really going to make any difference to your front end. I just get stuck in because I think you are going to like things. Now, first of all, the design still, in my opinion, could do with a little bit of refinement, but the key things are there. And I think it already brings enough to the table to make it better than the default Oxygen interface. First of all, Let's take a look at what we have to just make working with it easier. You can see we have the left and right hand panels that we're kind of used to, but these are now resizable. You can see we can go to a certain point and then they'll automatically hide. So if you're using a larger monitor, this makes it really useful. You can also make them bigger. So again, if you're using an ultra wide monitor, you could have nice big panels all set up. You can even bring the left and right hand panels together to have one chunky panel in one location without the need then to go back and forth across either side of the screen. Again, one of those little things that can be a massive game changer for users of Oxygen that spend eight to 10 hours a day and they're going back and forth can just be a bit of a pain. Okay, so I do like that side of things. And Closing them back down, you can just double click on both of these if you want to. And then just bring the panels back. It's simply a case of double clicking again to bring those back onto screen. Nice and simple. And if you want to, you can use the space bar to hide both those panels and the space bar to bring them both back or whatever's open. So if you're used to working with something like Photoshop or any of those kind of tools where the space bar just hides everything just to give you full screen, that's going to be something you'll naturally gravitate towards. Okay, so that's really the simple part of the first part of the interface. You also see we've got this quick access panel down the left hand side, again, very akin to tools like Photoshop. So you can access all the kind of key things you'd normally go into by having to go into advanced and then selecting what you want. So we can go in, we can just jump straight to the background settings, we can jump to the size and spacing, layout, typography, all those kinds of things, including your CSS, your JavaScript and your attributes options. So for example, now inside the custom CSS section, we've also now got code hinting. So let's just say we're gonna just create a, a div. It doesn't really matter too much. 
Now if we go ahead and start typing in any value, so for example, we're at a border, you can see once I start typing border, we get the full hinting setup, so I can now very quickly go through and choose exactly what I want and start editing all the content inside this. So this is gonna speed up your hand coding side of things. And from my understanding, this also works with the JavaScript side of things as well. So pretty cool to see we've got all that. You've also got a nice visible notification to say something has been edited inside that panel. You see this little green dot that we can see at a glance exactly what's going on and which has been edited. There's no real difference to what you see inside here anyway, but again, the whole update to the visual side of things just makes that just a little bit easier to see exactly what's going on. So I like all those aspects of it. And like I say, you've got options to most of the key things inside here. If we hop over now to the top left hand side, you can see we've also got access to various different sections. One of the things I really like about this is when you're creating any kind of design, you're gonna be using repetitive or repetitive elements over and over again. And sometimes you want to find one of those in complex designs, that can be very difficult and time consuming. We have though the filter option, and the filter option is pretty cool. We can simply come into the filter, click on it, and now we can go ahead and we can filter out things for all the divs. You wanna find something like any image tags, you can just enable and disable any of these and then you can simply go in and start editing that, selecting it directly from the browser on the right hand side. So the filter is something that I think is incredibly useful. And like I say, something that's gonna save you a ton of time as you go through working with more complex designs. You've also got the option then to jump in for your selectors. You can come over into your style sheets, you can come over into your settings and you can also come over into the option for where you can see all your targeted code. You'll also have a ton of keyboard shortcuts you can use to access these. Unfortunately, because I'm screen recording, these don't necessarily always work the way they should do, but just bear in mind that they are there and I would recommend checking out the documentation just so you can see what they are and how easy they are to work with. Now, coming down to the bottom left-hand side, we've got some more options on here. You can see we can toggle the power mode on and off, and this is just under development, so I think this is something that's gonna come as we kind of go through. You can also go ahead and adjust the sizing and the scaling and so on. So let's just say you wanna get a bird's eye view of your design, and at the moment, obviously, you can't do that because there's just too much on screen. Well, we could drop that down to say, for example, 50%, and now we get much more of our screen real estate back and we can see our design. We can very quickly then go ahead and make design decisions using any of the tools that we want inside Oxygen itself. Simple little things, but incredibly useful. You can also change the resolution on here. So we can jump it to 1440, for example, or 2560, or 1280. So you can see what the scaling is gonna look like on any of these different setups. And then we can just hit reset to put everything back to the standard default settings. You've also got option then for responsive controls. So we can click on this, and we can switch into responsive mode. Now, if we click on the options, which are the three little dots to the right-hand side, we can then go and choose various different options. So the width and the height of a design on any kind of device. We've also got a range of predefined layout sizes, including common devices. So you might wanna check this on an iPhone 8, for example. We can click on that and boom, there we go. We're now checking this out on an iPhone 8 resolution. You wanna change it onto an iPhone 12 mini, there we go, we can now change it. So the resolution now is being updated. Or you can use any of these, as it's named, the most common market share, typical resolutions in other words. So we could say, let's look on a really low resolution or a higher resolution or whatever you kind of want to do. So again, just little things that make the whole process of working with this considerably easier to set up. Now finally, we have the bottom strip of options. So. Like I mentioned earlier on, we've got the live server. Now again, this is one of those things that I would highly recommend you check the documentation out to get an understanding of how some of these tools actually work. So we've got the live server and you can also toggle the live server syncing. So if you wanna make sure that everything is synced and up to date, you can use that option. You've got your macro mode, you've got x-ray mode, which basically just turns your entire design into grayscale which can be useful, allows you to focus on the design and also shows you all the outlines of each of the different modules that are being used to create the actual layout itself. You can go ahead and enable the grid mode if you want to, and this will overlay the grid, and you can use these tools in combination with each other. So if we want to switch back on to normal color modes, everything is back to normal, you can do that. And like I say, these kinds of things can be incredibly useful for making sure that everything is pixel perfect in your designs, and also works when you change over to various different resolutions. So we're gonna switch over to mobile views and so on, you can see the grid updates accordingly. We can disable that. You've also got the ability to import your style sheets and this allows you then to pull in, we're using global colors, it doesn't show the variable values and so on, so you can use this to import those into the Oxygen Editor. You've got auto fix, but it'll try to fix common problems. And also you've got the, uh, the user interface or preferences. So 
Again, there's a ton more options inside here. You can change the actual theme itself to something like Recoded Designer, and it just basically changes the color scheme, for example. It doesn't really change too much of the actual layout and design. And you can see you can adjust the default widths of your panels and so on, your left-right mix. So you can adjust this if you want to for the different sizes, the various different things, when you can combine these two together. Lots of options, dig in there, take, check it out. You can see we can save these, we can export them. So if we use multiple different workstations, we can export our preferences over between those different workstations, lots of things. Import, apply feedback, record a bug, your documentation, your support, your how. You get the picture. There's a ton of options inside the preferences panel. And that's basically a quick overview of the interface itself. One thing I do want to say that I really do appreciate before moving on is when you select any kind of module or element, and you come into any way you've made changes, you can see all the different options, the default options, those kinds of things, they're all highlighted so you can at a glance see exactly what setting is applied. And then if you wanna make a change to it, you can simply hit that and it will update accordingly. Great when you're working through designs and you just quickly wanna get a visual sort of heads up when something is applied and you may not want that to be applied, you wanna make changes to it. Cool, just a, another quality of life setup. So that basically is my very, very brief overview of just some of the things that Recoder Workspace brings to the Oxygen Editor. Have you used it? What are your thoughts on it? I think it's a step in the right direction. Now, for me, I think when you have projects like this that really do help you streamline your process, make things better, whatever, they should be supported. And to do that, you can very easily just jump over onto the Recoder Buy Me A Coffee page, the link will be in the description. You can donate and you can support this project. They're also talking about in the Facebook group, how about going about monetizing the actual project? This is something, again, I think they should seriously look into because development on projects like this needs to be encouraged and nurtured. And if that has a small price tag with it, an annual price tag, a lifetime price tag, whatever the situation is, then these are things that really should be put into place to help reward those coders, those designers, and those people looking to streamline our workflow. So again, links to all of these things will be in the description, including the Recoder Workspace project. As always, let me know your thoughts, comments, and opinions in the comment section down below. As always, all the applicable links are in the description. My name is Paul C, this is WP Tetson. Until next time. Take care.